year old right hander for whom this is a very important night as well. And for more on Nate Evaldi and his mixed results against the Yankees this year, we say good evening to Buster Olney. Matt, the last time the Nate Evaldi faced the Yankees 11 days ago, he got pounded. His splitter wasn't good. His slider wasn't good. Seven runs allowed in two and two thirds innings. He got just three swings and misses among 59 pitches. Now, Red Sox manager Alex Cora said he's the best guy to start this game. He's been their best pitcher. He's an all star. But tonight, Matt, count the swings and misses. They will tell a story about Evaldi's stuff. Well, Evaldi tonight, Buster pitching in his first career sudden death postseason game. Good numbers in six postseason appearances for the 2018 world champion Red Sox and 11 wins during the regular season this year. This is Aaron Boone's Yankee starting lineup that will oppose him tonight. The Yankees leading off with Anthony Rizzo. No DJ LeMayhew unavailable due to the sports hernia. The Yankees as a team the lowest swing rate highest walk rate and the second lowest chase percentage in baseball. Judge and Stanton follow Rizzo. Joey Gallo and Glaber Torres will be very important tonight. Alex has more on that. Gardner, Urshela, Higashioka, and Andrew Velasquez, the first and only Bronx-born Yankee, a rookie, makes the start tonight as uh, Aaron Boone and Alex Cora, who are very friendly off the field, kind of wave each other off as this one is underway to the winner the Tampa Bay Rays a team that won 100 games this year for the loser tonight their 2021 season comes to an end Rizzo Judge and Stanton for the Yankees and Anthony wants to take an extra moment <laughs> Crowd on its feet for the first pitch and Rizzo takes a one hopper down to Bobby Dahlbeck for the first out hit it hard but right at the Boston first baseman. Well that will bring up Aaron Judge the three time all star has been right in the middle of all the Yankee success this year particularly hot down the stretch. 23 runs batted in over his last 23 games and he's the guy that saved their season Sunday afternoon. He has been the best player from day one to 162. And if it wasn't for a couple other players Otani and Guerrero he would be your American League MVP. And Judge takes a strike. That game winning RBI against the Rays on Sunday in the Bronx was Judge's eighth go ahead hit in the eighth inning or later this year. It's a Yankees modern franchise record. And they're two out here for Nate Valdi. A good fastball here, up and in exactly where you want to pitch, Aaron Judge. 98 up and tight crowding the big 6'7 282 right fielder. Buster talked about the importance of Nate Evaldi's fastball. Both of his outs have come on heaters to start the game so far. And on a crisp, seasonably chilly 60 degree night, the heater could play even bigger tonight. And here's Stanton offering it the first pitch and fouling it back. Well, the last time the Yankees were in Boston, this guy was a one man wrecking crew. Had a 7 for 12 weekend series, which included three homers and 10 runs batted in. And that's why, for me, all the pressure is on the guy on deck, Joey Gallo, who has to protect both Stanton and Judge and a guy who has struggled mightily looking. Oh he got another one. He got another one. No it's off the monster. And Stanton who put it into the home run trot thinking the same thing I was is satisfied with a single. Oh my. I mean, 
game of inches. But in a one-game playoff, anything can count. Stan thinking is way gone. But you mentioned the cool weather, Matt. Maybe last week that's a home run. Tonight it stays in the ballpark for a long single. Well, Fenway Park can uh, giveth and Fenway Park can taketh away. And now it's Joey Gallo. For me, the Yankees will go as far as this guy will take them. Again, hitting under 160 with man in scoring position. He's the guy that has the most responsibility in this lineup. Aaron Boone told us that he's looking for a guy like Torres to be the guy. But first, Gallo has to have productive at bats pass the baton or get on base. It's 0-2 to Gallo. And that's the landing spot for the Red Sox. They have a nice landing spot with Judge and Stanton. If the game is on the line, there's no reason to give Judge or Stanton something to hit. This is where you land every time if you're the Red Sox. Seven pitches, all of them strikes by Evaldi as he misses for the first time. Stanton hit a cutter for a home run to right center. He hit a cutter and almost put a hole in that wall. If you're Nathan Evaldi, take that cutter and throw it away. Attack Stanton next time. Fastball's up and splits down. No more cement mix. Joey Gallo led the American League in walks and strikeouts this year between his time with the Rangers and the Yankees. Of course, traded to the Bronx at the deadline. A part of the Yankees' effort to improve their left-handed hitting component, which was virtually non-existent before the acquisitions of Rizzo and Gallo. Yeah, R&D acquisition for the Yankees in their front office, assuming that the exit velocity would be a big part. But in order to have exit velocity, you have to make contact. And Gallo has not made a lot of contact since becoming a Yankee. Matt, you mentioned Nathan Evaldi filling the strike zone. Look, that, uh, as Aaron Boone said, you know that's part of what makes Evaldi great as a pitcher. But it also works well for the Red Sox. If he can be efficient in getting through innings here, Potentially he goes deeper in a game for a team that has struggled with bullpen depth. Well the Yankees have made that a little easier swinging really aggressively. Three of the first three of the first four Yankees offered at the first pitch. Did he check it. He did not. They appeal down to third. Gallows rung up and a two out single is left stranded. A scoreless start to the night for Nate Evaldi. Oh. Was not as kind for Garrett Cole. Most recently, five earned runs on Wednesday at Toronto. And as you can see, with an ERA over six in his last five assignments, there is some optimism that the Red Sox may be able to get to him tonight. He's been a tough customer in postseasons past. As Kyle Schwarber digs in to lead things off for Boston. Cole's night underway. As we set the rest of the Red Sox starting lineup for Alex Cora tonight. Kike Hernandez and Rafi Devers follow. Bogarts, Verdugo, and Renfro four through six. Kevin Ploiecki catches tonight because in part better results with Nate Evaldi on the mound. Bobby Dahlbeck and Christian Royo follow. The Red Sox have been a high scoring team at home all year averaging almost six runs a game here. The top total in all of the game. And it's a ball and a strike to Kyle Schwarber. Guys Kyle Schwarber told me that he got a phone call late last night from Alex Gore that he would be the leadoff hitter. He said that when he's in this spot changes nothing about his approach to the plate. It's hard to avoid the irony with the two former Cubs teammates Schwarber and Rizzo who were each reluctant to lead off and used to chill Joe Madden as such at the friendly confines back in the day and they're leading off against one another tonight 
in a winner take all postseason matchup. Two and two. And for the Red Sox, one of the big offensive stories is the absence of J.D. Martinez. <laughs> we talked about LeMahieu not being available for the Yankees. Boston without a superstar as well. The ankle injury that J.D. suffered in the final weekend of the season has cost him a postseason start. Two two to Schwarber a high fly ball out to center field for Gardner. And that's how Garrett Cole's night begins. A yeah, good fastball here good pitch to hit two strikes. And Schwarber that's one that he's going to shake his head over. A great pitch to hit. Pops it up. Garrett Cole has had his ups and downs in October. He got knocked around by the Cubs in 2015. Got knocked around hard by the Red Sox on their way to the World Series in 18. But this is a different Garrett Cole. This is a pitcher that's more mature, more north and south. That Garrett Cole was more east and west with sinkers and sliders. Today's Garrett Cole is fastballs up, curveball, and change up. Kike Hernandez ended the season in good offensive shape, a multi hit game in five of his last eight starts down the stretch. There's an infield pop. Torres has it for route number two. Well, that'll bring up Rafi Devers, whose two homer Sunday saved the Red Sox season. Helped him come back from a one time five to one deficit in D.C. Capped off a terrific body of work in his age 24 season a 279 average 38 homers 113 runs batted in. Boy there's some pretty good history here for Devers three home runs against Garrett Cole matching the most he's hit against any pitcher in his major league career and that on the heels of an 0 for 8 head to head start against the Yankee right hander. Two of those home runs on fastballs. Right. One to one. Mark Carlson is the home plate umpire tonight. Again, a six man crew throughout the postseason. Big wave and a miss. Let's talk about Mark Carlson's umpiring tendencies, Alex, and how it might affect the game tonight. Yeah, and, and for Garrett Cole, it's arm side, right? That's the side where he feels most comfortable. Arm side for Cole, a weight from lefties into righties. And if you notice Carlson, the, the home plate umpire, he sets up over the glove side at the first base. So he does not see that other side quite as well. That narrowly missed Devers. Coming in hot, too, with a 99-mile-an-hour fastball. It's a little wake up call not only for Devers but for the entire lineup say hey it's going to be a different day here tonight do not get too comfortable up there this is my box tonight. Oh. Went back over the outside corner and missed wide and that fills the count three and two. So Devers has done a nice job of climbing out of a one two hole. The key here is keep that same discipline you had one two and two two. Don't get overexcited and chase something right now. Payoff pitch. Lost him on ball four. So a two out base runner on either side of the scorecard to start the first innings tonight. And a chance for the three time all star Xander Bogarts. And that walk there is not a coincidence. You know when you go over the scout reports. There's always one guy you circle and for the Red Sox is Devers. So when in doubt two outs do not get beat by Devers go to Bogarts who is not swinging the bat as well for the Yankees. They have the two monuments Stanton and Judge 
You be very careful with them and go right at Gallo every single time. For Xander Bogarts, as good as the complete body of work was this year, a 295 average, 79 driven in. He was not as productive after the All Star break. Lost some time on the COVID IL in the second half of the season. And got into the gate with just a 5 for 32 finish this year. One and one. There are those that firmly believe, and you played in enough of these games, that it really didn't matter what happened at the moment you got to the postseason. It is a fresh start. Do you buy that? Absolutely, and anything can happen. And the danger of a one-game playoff, you play 162, and the recourse that with 27 outs, you can go home, and the winner goes home. It's a great theater for baseball, for us broadcasting it, for the fans watching it. But it's, it's miserable for the player because you know that if you have a bad game, a bad play, you're gone. Something to watch, Matt, early here. When you have a guy like Garrett Cole who is so dominant and you get a guy like Devers 1-2, usually a guy like that doesn't let you climb out of that hole. So the fact, A, that he walked him is a sign to watch. Maybe he does not have his good stuff. And when he shows that, you want to get him early. 2-1 pitch. Bogart sends a drive to center field and deep. Gardner turns around and watches it fly. The sixth home run allowed by Garrett Cole at Fenway Park this year in less than 17 innings. Bogarts, who ended the season cold, gets red hot. And to your point, Matt, the season's over. New season, new pitch, and a new start here for the Red Sox up 2-0. Not the fastball, but the secondary pitch. And we talked about the Devers at bat. Alex Verdugo next, and he pops up on the first pitch. But the first inning damage done. Xander Bogart's two-run shot opens the scoring for the home side. Foster. The Red Sox have had some wonky defensive moments this year. More than made up for by the fact that they've got so many power spots in their lineup. So Nate Valdi back to work with a 2 nothing lead. He gets Glaber Torres, Brett Gardner, and Gio Urshela for the Yankees. Torres ended the season by hitting safely in 15 of his last 18 games and falls behind quickly 0-2. Two strikes to Torres. That's the pitch Ivaldi has to watch all night long. Is that cutter slider? That's a dangerous pitch. Stanton hit a home run here to right field last time and almost knocked the wall down in that same pitch. That pitch right there. Well, Nate Ivaldi was the only pitcher in the game this year who threw five pitches, each with a usage rate of over 10%. So he has the ability to mix it up the way few can. Guy for years has relied on his fastball. There's one that misses. At one point, Evaldi scrapped his slider, but then after reconsidering, felt like he needed another weapon to get right handed hitters out, put it back into the arsenal this year, and it's been a good pitch for him. See what he has on 3 2 to Torres. Fastball that's hit out to right field. Carried a bit on Renfro before he hauls it in. 
Alex, you notice that the uh, Red Sox are going with multiple signs, nobody on base. What does that tell you? Yeah, you do that in this paranoia, right? As one game, winner goes on, loser, go, you know, goes home. You want to make sure that there's nothing being watched. These guys have played each other over 20 times if you include spring training. They know each other way too well, so not a bad idea to mix it up. One gone for the longest tenured Yankee, 38 year old Brett Gardner, playing in the postseason for the 10th time in his 14 season career. Gardner's playing in his 68th playoff game, and that's the eighth most in Yankee history. If they go on a run, he could catch Yogi Berra, who played in. 75 during his Hall of Fame time as a Yankee. People always want to know how do you beat the Yankees? Is you don't walk the Yankees. In only 10 games this year, they had no walks. They were three and seven. So you're talking about the most disciplined offensive team when it comes to chase rate, the Yankees, versus the most undisciplined team in the Red Sox. But if you throw in the strike zone like Boger show us. They will hit you, hit you very hard. Ball and two strikes. They count here to Gardner. K zone 3D just clipped the upper outer corner of the zone. And keep an eye on that corner because that's where home plate umpire Mark Carlson loves. That's his hot zone right there. Away to lefties into righties. <laughs> Up and in and missed at 100 miles an hour. But we talked about it. That's not where Mark Carlson likes to call the game. If that same pitch is on the other side, it's strike three. The 2-2. Two -two. Got him. Dropped down that time. You know, Nate Evaldi has added a little Johnny Cueto funk to his deliveries this year. He'll give you different arm angles. He'll quick pitch you. Watch him drop down to strike out Gardner here. And, and that was nasty. 80 miles an hour coming from the same tunnel as a 99 mile an hour fastball. That got him on the location and the velocity. We have a revised three quarters angle there. Second strike out of the game, and here's Gio Urshela. On the first pitch, a little dribbler. That's going to be a tough play for Ploiecki. He won't be able to make it. And Urshela's aboard on a two out infield single. And like they say, you couldn't have thrown it out there any better. And then struggling down. But not bad after yeah. the big fall this. Last weekend, yeah, here. The, the the Sunday dive into the dugout gave the Yankees considerable pause, and it, it was kind of in question as to whether or not Urshela would even be available tonight. Here's the catcher, Kyle Higashioka. Let's take you back to Sunday's regular season finale in the Bronx against Tampa. And look at the ground covered by Urshela to try to make a play on this foul pop, which he does, and then he does a skate right into the Rays' dugout. I could not help but think about the same play that Derek Jeter made going into the left center, left field bleachers. And I'm telling you, I played third base there for a long time. That is a long ways to go. I wouldn't have even been 10 feet of that foul ball. Well, what we didn't see was the fact that Urshela spent a good five minutes on his back yeah. in the dugout, and there was some real concern as to his well being. I was watching it live, and I for sure thought that he was out for the remainder of the year. And the fact he walked out of his own, I thought was a miracle and stayed in the game. 0 oh, 2 the count to Gashioka. Guys, Nathan Abaldi in that last start he made against the Yankees on September 24th, he had a total of three swings and misses among 59 pitches. He's already got four tonight among his first 26. Ooh. 
The one two is fouled away. Well, you know, Garrett Cole is credited for being a big game pitcher, and he is. But don't sleep on Nate of all these big game prowess either. The last time we saw him in the postseason, he was giving the Red Sox six innings of relief work in what turned into the longest postseason game in Major League Baseball history, Game Three of the 2018 World Series that lasted over seven hours. Did he check it on the appeal? He did not. Two check swings have been rung up for strikeouts tonight for Nate Evaldi. Another two out runner left stranded. Two nothing Boston. In Yankee franchise history, it was 18 years ago he hit that Tim Wakefield knuckleball into the left field seats in the Bronx to win game seven of the. 03 ALCS. Hunter Renfro leads things off in the Boston half of the second. 2 0 Red Sox on the Xander Bogarts homer. But Garrett Cole's come in to buzz the tower a couple times tonight. Cleared out Devers in the first. All in two strikes. Alex, you had that happen to you in a playoff game. Roger Clemens on the mound when you were playing for the Mariners. What's the potential impact? Well, it's not just the impact for the for the hitter, me in this case, but he was sending a message to my entire team with the Mariners, and I think that's exactly what Cole was trying to do. Fly ball to right that drops just foul, and there's not a whole lot of foul territory down there. Well, when Aaron judges. You know, coming down at you into the stance, that's the one moment you might regret your first row seat. <laughs> yeah, no man's land right here. You have one platinum glove winner in Rizzo chasing it, and Judge, who should be a gold glove winner this year. These folks still haven't sat down. And a wave and a miss by Renfro. First strike out of the game for Garrett Cole. Well, here's a look at the upcoming 2021 MLB postseason schedule. Tomorrow night on TBS, 8 p.m. start for the National League Wild Card game between the Cardinals and the Dodgers. A good one, boy. Max Scherzer and Adam Wainwright in L.A. Thursday, game one of the ALDS, the White Sox and Astros, 4 p.m. Eastern on FS1. And then on Thursday, game one between the Rays and the winner of this one, 8 p.m. Eastern, also on FS1. One gone for Kevin Plowecki. 0 oh, and 1 to the Red Sox catcher. No real surprise that Plowecki is starting a catcher tonight, given his success with Nate Evaldi. They have combined for an ERA about a point lower than when Christian Vasquez catches Evaldi. And that was a tough conversation for Alex Cora as he shared with us before the game. Vasquez is such an important player here, and you do have a bit more offensive upside. I think it's interesting that both managers, Alex, have gone with defense first lineups tonight. Yeah, defense and comfort is what they both chose. And, and both managers understand the temperature of the room, the comfort level for these pitchers. Two and two. There's nothing more important than a pitcher going on the road with his caddy behind the plane. I mean, that, you know, pitch catch is so important, but the psychology of it, this is a very hard place to play. You want to make it as easy as possible for Cole. Lewecki sends one out to right center field. Hey, so much for just being a defense first guy. Kevin Plowecki with a one out double. After all, this is a right hand batter that hit 287 this year. And he's in scoring position with one away. And we talked about with Devers 1 2, 2 2, 3 2. This is another mistake. 98 miles an hour, but right down Broadway. And gets smoked to right center field. 
The Red Sox led all of baseball in doubles and extra base hits during the regular season. They've already homered and doubled tonight in an inning and a third. And here's some guy with some significant home run pop. Bobby Dahlbeck, 25 of them during the regular season. One and one. Yeah, we, we talked about looking for signs, but right here, 2-2 two, two pitch, fastball, 98, just a flat fastball. You see very little movement, and Garrico is too good of a pitcher to give you a pitch that good with two strikes. That should be your put-away pitch. Instead, two-strike double. So here are some contrasting numbers as Dahlbeck falls behind one and two. Garrett Cole since the start of the 2019 season has a major league best 39 percent whiff rate when there's a runner in scoring position. However with runners in scoring position over his last three starts opponents have gone eight for 19. It's just more proof that the landing was not good for Garrett Cole this year. And tonight you're seeing it with the quality of the swings, the quality of the takes. And I got to question the changeup to Bogarts. Three home runs on changeups against Cole this year, but that's the first one against a right handed batter and the wrong batter who covers the entire plate so well, like Bogarts. Two and two, the count to Bobby Dahlbeck. Christian Arroyo, the number nine hitter, waiting on deck with a man in scoring position. And a swing and a tip foul that keeps Dahlbeck alive. There is a strikeout in Bobby Dahlbeck's game. As good as he was down the stretch for Boston, an OPS over 1,100 in his last 40 games. Ten of his last 21 at bats have resulted in strikeouts. The next 2 2. Easy take to fill the count. Three balls and two strikes. Really nice job taking that 2 2 pitch. And now you have to stay disciplined and not get over anxious. The 3 2 pitch, a called strike three. And a great slider here, 88 miles an hour, 3 2. Nothing Bobby can do right here. Actually, decent take and a great pitch by Cole. Best of the night. So two gone now with a runner in scoring position for the number nine hitter second baseman Christian Arroyo who's making just his third start since July 18th. Oh. Once again the J.D. Martinez less Red Sox looking a little bit different in this one with Arroyo in there batting ninth Schwarber leading off. Different lineups offered by both managers in this one game wild card. This is not business as usual. And Arroyo falls behind 0 2. All three outfielders playing relatively shallow. All three with good arms, accurate arms, especially in right field. Judge is playing shallow. 
So not a guaranteed run, just at a base hit. This will be the 20th pitch of the inning here from Cole. Looking to strand that one out double. We talked about the great swing and miss rate he's got with runners in scoring position. It's shown up here. Oh, no. oh man. That's a close call on another good slider, and it's a ball and two strikes. Good take, good pitch, and for Cole, getting a much better feel of that slider, working that fastball up, and a much tighter slider away to the righties. The Red Sox scored over 40% of their runs with two outs during the regular season. Bogart's homer came with two out in the first. Couldn't lay off the high gas. Couple of big strikeouts neutralized the one out. Ought to be perhaps this year's version of somebody that Buster Olney is standing by with. <laughs> That's right, Matt. I'm talking with Bucky Dent, the hero of the 1978 playoff between the Yankees and the Red Sox. What's it like for you to be here? It's awesome. 43 years later to be back here in a one-game playoff. Couldn't ask for anything better, man. It's it's just great. How often do you get asked about that home run? Uh, probably two or three times a day. I mean, it's uh, it's something that was special. It was a great game like this game's going to be tonight, and uh, everybody was watching it, and uh, it was a historic game. How have you been greeted here? Pretty good. They don't know I'm here yet. <laughs> Bucky, thanks. Matt, back to you. Yeah, thanks, Buster. They know now, by the way. They, they know what Bucky's wearing. You might want to change jackets and hats to get out of here unscathed. Here's Anthony Rizzo with one away. You know that that game, uh, that 1978 tiebreaker, might be the single most talked-about game in the history of our sport. Mm -hmm. If you had to pick one, and you know, according to legend, George Steinbrenner was very upset when the Yankees lost what was a coin flip to determine home field advantage. As it turns out, if that game was played in the Bronx, the ball Bucky Dent hit probably isn't a homer. And maybe there's a different outcome in 1978. Good point. What people don't remember is that the bat that Bucky used to hit that home run belonged to Mickey Rivers because Bucky had cracked his bat in the at bat previously. So Mickey Rivers is on deck. He said, Here, use my bat. And Mickey still doesn't get any credit. It's all Bucky <laughs> Dent, Bucky Dent. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Mickey looking for some royalties. Something. <laughs> Counts two balls and a strike to Anthony Rizzo. Two and two. Well, let's take you back to the 1978 tiebreaker game. Mike Torres on the mound for Boston. And the least likely to hurt you with a homer did just that. And Bucky has a pretty good name. Good nickname here in Massachusetts. Well, <laughs> do that on the after hours <laughs> portion of the telecast tonight. <laughs> Two balls and two strikes to count to Anthony Rizzo. You know, Don Zimmer, who managed that team for the Red Sox, uh, later on, much later on, many years later, rented out a house in Florida that was owned by Bucky Dent. The two became friendly. And as, as legend has it, once again, there were pictures of Bucky Dent lining the hallways of when he hit the homer in the 78 tiebreaker game. When Zimmer moved out of the house, he returned only to find those pictures turned backwards and tobacco stains in the carpet in front of each of them. <laughs> two balls and two strikes to Rizzo. Hey guys, Don Zimmer complained to our friend Tim Kirchin about how there was a picture hanging over Dent's bed of that home run and every night Don Zimmer had to fall asleep <laughs> underneath that picture. <laughs> Rizzo grounded out on the first pitch of the game battling here staying alive on a series of two strike pitches it's still two and two. Batting with one away bases empty to two nothing Boston. 
Rizzo's had some success against Nate Evaldi, by the way, to the tune of five hits in nine at bats prior to tonight. All five of the hits have come on fastballs. And that includes three doubles in the damage. So this has been a matchup that's been a good one for the Yankees. Four straight foul balls for Rizzo and really choking out. We have long marveled at, at Rizzo's ability to adjust and change his pass in two strike counts without limiting his power. Indeed, and he's had some epic long at bats ended by a home run. And once he came into this clubhouse, Matt, he changed the attitude, the temperature of that room and started talking more baseball with the guys around the water cooler, the importance of getting guys in from third. Four strikeouts for Nate Evaldi tonight. And you talked about him having a little Louis Tion a little bit. Watch the quick pitch here. He said five foul balls, I'm done with you. Watch this, I'm just gonna go fast. <laughs> and he got Rizzo on the timing. Well done by Evaldi. A magician out there tonight. And that's just disrupting the timing of the hitter. A guy like Rizzo who has a leg kick, who has him timed perfectly. Now you go quick and you got him. Aaron Judge, first pitch, well hit out to right center field. Hernandez on the run, making the catch, and the Yankees go down in order in the top of the third. We play two and a half, still two nothing Boston. Specific to order, go to ESPNplus.com slash Fury hyphen Wilder hyphen three. Kyle Schwarber leads things off in the home half of inning number three. Two nothing Red Sox. Schwarber, Hernandez, and Devers for Boston against Garrett Cole, who yielded the two run home run in the first and then pitched a round to one out double in the second. And it's quickly 0 2 on Kyle Schwarber. What a big acquisition Schwarber was at the deadline. Acquired from the Cubs and got his Red Sox career off to a little later start with a knee injury that he was recovering from. But once healthy, he really proved the acquisition worthy. In fact, among players traded at the deadline this year, Kyle Schwarber's 957 OPS was the best. Yeah, with the universal DH perhaps coming to baseball in 2022 and him becoming a free agent, he's going to do well this winter. Oh, oh high and deep out to right field. Judge back and watching, and it's gone! He got him as a Cub in 2015. And he got him as a Boston Red Sox tonight. And as a Cub in 2015, it was a slider that he hit a country mile. This time is a 1-2 fastball up in the zone, 97 miles an hour. And when Garrett Crow is right, you do not even foul this pitch off. And Schwarber hit it a country mile. First pitch to Kike Hernandez, a little dribbler. Cole won't have a play, so one that's hit a bunch and one that's just dribbled up the line. Cole's troubles continue. Let's take you back to the homer. Now, when Garrett Cole is going well, this is a pitch you do not even think of putting in play. And to get on top of that fastball, a one two count, it's indicative that Garrett Cole does not have his best stuff tonight. That is the seventh home run Garrett Cole has allowed at Fenway Park this year in just over 18 innings. 
And now it's Devers. It was his two out walk that set up the Bogarts homer in the first. Alex through the years I've heard the phrase from pitching coaches from talent evaluators scouts they talk about pitchers and they say when they're at their best they are free and easy. It feels like Garrett Cole's the opposite of that tonight. What do you think it, it does and it, you can just tell with the fastball command you've already had a hard double a home run in the changeup and the fastball up that's the one that's most alarming because one two ninety seven top of the zone you're not supposed to get on top of that and hit it a mile. Rafi Devers is the fourth straight Red Sox hitter dating back to the second that swung at the first pitch. And you guys see Hernandez leading off first base. Look, the Red Sox and Yankees are not teams that run, but with both starting pitchers, there's a history of giving up stolen bases this year. Opponents nine for nine against Garrett Cole. And Alex Cora would do the unpredictable. And he will run when you don't expect it. Yeah, and you know, to further that point, I mean, the regular season DNA patterns get thrown out the window on a night like tonight. Think about wild card games in the past. Kansas City running wild against the Oakland A's. Exposing a wart that uh, the Oakland starter that night was never thought to have had. Still nobody out here in the third. And I guess if you're wondering, you know, how long Aaron Boone goes with his ace, who does not look like he has his ace stuff, we might get an answer because he's already got Clay Holmes up in the bullpen. And to your point, Matt, there's no waiting around. You can't figure out if, if Garrett Cole can find it. If he doesn't have it early, Boone has to go to the next guy right away. Two one to Devers is it for a strike. Uh, we talked about the homers that Cole has allowed here at this ballpark this year. Kind of continuing what was the trend that began in September. He gave up two homers Wednesday at Toronto but really has not been a good place for him overall here. Coming back from the injury of the hamstring has not landed very well and has lost some command and feel on his fastball. Three two Hernandez should be running here. Again Devers drew a very important base on balls with two out in the first. He's in another three and two count here. We we'll see if Alex Cora sends Hernandez sensing he can really step on the gas pedal here. There he goes. Doesn't matter ball four. Endeavors with another good walk but it was his first at bat falling behind one two that led to the Bogart's home run. One two gets a two two three two and then lays off. Doesn't get the big hit but gets the assist. Slider here and then a 2 1 change of 89 miles an hour. A questionable pitch selection. A guy against a guy. And that's Garrett Cole. Wow. Wow. I don't think anybody preparing for this one, evaluating this one, or previewing this one in any capacity wow. thought that Garrett Cole was going to be gone after two plus and 50 pitches. But that's exactly what's happened tonight. An early pitching change for the Yankees. We'll be right back. Short start from Garrett Cole tonight. Just two plus innings, three earned runs on four hits, couple of homers, and Aaron Boone not in a position where he can wait around to see if Cole can find it tonight. So he has 
thrown out a flare to his bullpen and his best ground ball guy. Clay Holmes has the second best ground ball rate in the majors among relievers with at least 40 innings of work this year and he is in desperate need of one this inning. A run already in first and second and nobody out. Xander Bogarts is homer tonight and takes strike one. Guys I was there in that first spring training press conference that Garrett Cole had as a Yankee. I remember him talking so enthusiastically about big moments about big games against the Red Sox. Well if the Yankees don't come come back and win this game this is going to become part of a, his legacy that he's going to have to live down. No one won the counts of Bogarts. Uh, you know what a burden that is until 09. Uh, that was a part of your narrative. Uh, no question. Uh, you know, Matt and Buster, I mean, look, the Yankees are saying $36 million a year, 324 over nine, is supposed to get you more than six outs here in October in the biggest game. This is why we brought you here. And look, there's health issues. I can't speak for Garrett Cole, but that's something he's definitely going to have to answer this year and in years to come. There was the hamstring strain that happened in Toronto in early September. The numbers weren't very good since that point. Oh and to the count of Bogarts. What a good block by Higashioka to prevent that one from getting to the fence. For Clay Holmes by the way. Another ex pirate relieving an ex pirate. He has really turned into an even better high leverage guy since joining the Yankees. Strikeout rate is up. Walk rate is down. Trying to neutralize Hernandez endeavors aboard with nobody out. And on the appeal another punch out. Every appeal has gone the way of a pitcher so far tonight. It's true on both sides of the scorecard one away. And a good pitch here. Oh man. Yeah too close. You got him going around. I do. OK. One away and now Holmes is in a position where one of those ground balls the likes of which he has turned over so frequently this year can get him out of the jam. Alex Verdugo popped up on the first pitch he saw in the first. You know after the trade that brought Holmes to the Yankees a lot of people around baseball were saying man how did this happen how did the Yankees get their hands on a guy who's so good well. He wasn't as effective in Pittsburgh and it's been a change of the repertoire just a tweak with the Yankees that's given him more success ditched his curveball he's thrown more sinkers since coming to the Bronx and the results have been outstanding on the ground for Urshela to Torres for one there's the ground ball and there's the double play. Exactly what Aaron Boone envisioned when he made the early change to the bullpen. However, another Boston homer has upped their early advantage. It's 3 0 Red Sox. Joining us for a visit, Booney, let's talk about the pitching change. It, it achieved the desired result, but what did you evaluate when you made the call to remove Cole early? Just felt like it was time. We're, we're set up back there and going through a tough part of the lineup. and. Um, you know I just felt like it was you know I, I felt like Holmes could put the ball on the ground in that situation and, and we got to keep this thing in check right now I just felt like it was time was there anything wrong with Garrett physically or was that just performance based? No, it was just just uh, just a call with, uh, that I made to to go to the pen there nothing physically Booney, it seems like you're set up though it's three zero but you have your full bullpen Severino everybody's fresh you just got to keep it close how do you feel about the next innings so I said when we went out there we just got to keep it close hang around and, and and claw our way back into it, and, and we'll take this thing in the second half. Thanks for the time, as always, Booney. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks, guys. Maybe that starts here with Giancarlo Stanton leading things off against Nate Evaldi. A ball and two strikes. 
Stanton hit a ball to the monster back in the first that a lot of people including myself thought was gone. And he's a strikeout victim here in the fourth. Well that's five already tonight Alex. And pitching with a lot of confidence. I mean this is the fastball. 99 top of the zone exactly where you want it up and in to the slugger. And that ball's humming in there. Some cheese. So Nate Evaldi picking up right where he left off in his last start the same way Garrett Cole did and unfortunately for Cole it wasn't a positive thing in his last start Evaldi went six shutout innings with seven punch outs at Baltimore on Wednesday and here's Joey Gallo nine swings and misses for Evaldi among 44 pitches over 20 percent his typical rate during the regular season 12 percent says a lot about his stuff tonight. Well yeah Buster we talked about how patient the Yankees have been all year lowest swing rate in the game yet through the first three innings they swung at 23 of the first 39 pitches that have that have all the offer and that is not a Yankee like approach. It's either of all these stuff is really good which it is. Or it's the pressure of a one game winner go home scenario. Well, you're going to get him or he's going to get you. Last time we were here, he gave up seven runs in two and two thirds. The first 31 innings, he gave up seven runs. So st seven runs in 31 innings, and then seven runs in basically two and two thirds. He's not going to walk you. And that's the problem with guys in October. Your stuff is good enough with top tier pitching. They're going to get you out in the strike zone. I mean, he's got more life on his four seamer today than he did the last time the Yankees saw him. And the results speak loudly. Last time they saw him, four for six against the four seam fastball. They're 0 for seven against it tonight, including the Stanton strikeout that we just saw. Well, he has a look to him. He's got momentum. He's pitching with conviction. And more importantly, he's pitching ahead. <laughs> Of these Yankee hitters. Yeah. Well, and he's someone who's at the absolute heart of that Red Sox clubhouse, as Alex Cora described before the game. And everyone's always going to remember his performance. Game three, 2018 World Series, throws six innings in extra innings, just going out inning after inning. And when it was over, even after the Red Sox lost, Alex Cora. Got everyone gathered in the clubhouse, told the players, look, this is something we need to celebrate. And they gave Evaldi a standing ovation. Gallo with a high fly ball out to center field. And yeah, that's out number two. Hey, we want to welcome Boston Bruin teammates Charlie McAvoy and Charlie Coyle to tonight's game and remind you to make sure to catch them and all the other amazing NHL stars across all our platforms ESPN ESPN plus Hulu and ABC this season and don't miss the NHL opening night doubleheader next Tuesday the 12th on ESPN and ESPN plus Penn's Lightning at 730 Eastern followed by the nightcap Seattle and Las Vegas. Owen won the count to Glaber Torres, who lined to right in his first at bat. Matt, you talked about earlier a little Lewis Tian. Watch this now. Watch the hesitation. Oh, yeah. Struck out on a quick pitch earlier to Rizzo, and now the little. Oh, oh. <laughs> it, Nate Evaldi is uh, conjuring up some. Franchise greats got a little dice K tonight. Yeah. A little El Tiante. And Buster, to your point, I played with Nathan Evaldi. You're talking about one of the best human beings, world class character, a family guy from Alvin, Texas, the same hometown as the great Nolan Ryan. But when you talk about work ethic and makeup and a great teammate, Nathan Evaldi is that guy and then some. A work ethic for sure. It's a guy that's come back off of two Tommy John surgeries plus an additional elbow procedure. And he makes Torres lift a fly ball out to center. Seven in a row set down by Evaldi. Three run lead in check. Middle of the fourth. Three nothing Boston. 
sneaking that fastball inside. He was short to it and hit it out of the ballpark. What are the adjustments that uh, Evaldi has made? Can you tell us some company secrets? Uh, no, uh, there's people watching all over the place. So, we'll, <laughs> yeah, we just keep playing, man. Got it. Alex, thanks for the time. Best of luck the rest of the way. Later. Had to ask him. Fair. <laughs> I mean, he <laughs> he's open for a long, deep run here, and he doesn't want to give anything away at this stage of the game. Understandable. Hunter Renfro leads things off in the fourth inning for Boston. Renfro, Lewecki, and Dahlbeck. What, what do you think the difference has been between tonight and of all these last go around with New York. Assuming there's nothing with, you know, giving away signs or tipping perhaps, you know, in the glove or anything like that, you take all that away. Sometimes it could be a mechanical adjustment or just the way you attack these Yankee hitters. And today, it looks like he's been a lot more aggressive with the four seamer up riding and the split down. And that little cement mixture, he's kind of put it away. That's been a nice adjustment for Evaldi. Hunter Renfro was a strikeout victim in his first at bat that came against Garrett Cole who again lasted just two plus tonight. Clay Holmes came out of the bullpen with a run in runners at first and second struck out Bogarts and then got Verdugo to hit into a double play. And Holmes gets a second inning though there are two relievers up in the Yankee bullpen behind him. Wandy Peralta, Luis Severino both getting hot. It's been two home runs tonight. Xander Bogarts with a two run shot in the first. And then Kyle Schwarber, a solo homer, leading off the third. Matt, don't forget that it, it was in 2003 in that game seven where Aaron Boone was the hero and hit the home run. The Yankees were down 4 0. How about that for beating wow. the shift? Wow. With two strikes, the Yankees loaded up the left side of the infield. And Hunter Renfro said, I'll just take it the other way. That is a thing of beauty for Boston. I mean, good baseball here, not trying to do too much. No launch angle, no exit velocity, just good down to the nose baseball. Hit them where they ain't. And going back to that 2003, uh, when Aaron Boone hit the home run. We talked about 18 years ago. You know, Yankees were down 4-0, and it was Mike Mussina, number 35, who came in that game, got an out, and got the big double play with Johnny Damon to Jeter. And of course, they came back and won the game. So if you're the Yankees, you just got to keep them right there. You have an advantage with the bullpen. Keep it close. Here's Kevin Plawecki now, who doubled with one away in the second, and then was left stranded. Clay Holmes became Aaron Boone's favorite high leverage guy down the end of the season. Lo and behold, a high leverage relief opportunity struck a lot earlier than the Yankees would have preferred. So far, so good from Holmes. And the Yankees won't be caught guessing because they've got various bullpen pieces up for various situations. Peralta's likely getting hot for Schwarber, who's already homered. Urshela's in at third, watching out for the bunt, but with the sinker ball, you can hit one right by him. Another double play ball backs up Torres to Velasquez for one another double play turned by Clay Holmes. What up Holmes. <laughs> Torres is just so much more comfortable at second base. Watch the drop step right here. Very nice. Good internal clock a strike and another strike. The Yankees took off. The minute they took Torres away from shortstop and put him at second base. And Velasquez has just been an incredible light of energy for this team. That's a good combination out there for the Yanks. Two gun base is empty for the power threat. Bobby Dahlbeck struck out looking in the second. Hey. 
the first step for the Yankees getting back in this thing is hold down the Red Sox and so far so good for Holmes. But there's a lot of a lot of road to hoe. The next step is going to be figuring out how to get Nate Valdi out of the game. Because if it came down to a battle of the bullpens a lot of people feel like the Yankees have an advantage. It's a fly ball out to right. Nothing comes of the leadoff single. Red Sox go down in order in the fourth. On to inning number five, still 3 0 Boston. Back with Alex Rodriguez and Buster only, Matt Vaskersian, and a 3 0 Boston lead as the Yankees dig in for the top of the fifth with Brett Gardner, Gio Urshela, and Kyle Higashioka. A couple of homers and Nate Valdi, and that spells the Boston advantage through the first half of the night. Slow breaking ball taken for strike one. At some point tonight, the Yankee lineup is going to, at part, go back to being the Yankee lineup. Been much more aggressive tonight than they had during the regular season. Again, they had the lowest swing rate in baseball for 162 games at 44%. Tonight, it's over 60%. You tip your cap in part to Evaldi, who's always in the strike zone. That's probably a part of the answer, but you know, you wonder about the one game win or die ramifications tonight and how that gets in a, a player's mind. Yeah, the, the, the Yankees have always had a bully mentality offense which means if you run away from them eventually like they did here uh, a couple you know 10 days ago Stanton home run grand slam three run homer all those were set up by walks when the Yankees have not walked this year there's been 10 games they're three and ten I'm three balls and a strike to count to Gardner the closest they've been to a base on balls tonight Just two singles yielded by Evaldi through the first four. The 3 1 to Gardner is in for strike. Good pitch by Evaldi and a very good take by Gardner. A veteran take. Make him throw you two strikes. The full count pitch. Got him swinging. Another strikeout for Evaldi on a pitch that's in the zone. Six of them tonight. The Yankees don't chase, but if you go in their little box, they will swing and miss. Here's the 3-1. Excellent pitch. Good take. And 3-2 even better live on the fastball. But another strike and a pitch that Gardner cannot take. I mean, that's just a perfect pitch. And that's 10 swings and misses generated by Evaldi tonight. First pitch to Gio Urshela's line softly out to left, and there are two gone in the fifth. Guys, let me tell you a story about Evaldi's personality. He, of course, has had so many injuries during the course of his career, a couple Tommy John surgeries. And at the time the Red Sox signed him to that four year, $68 million deal, his agent called him, telling the news of the deal, and then he asked him, Hey, where are you? Uh, I'm on my roof changing the Christmas lights putting them on the, putting them on his agent said you know what maybe you can get somebody else to put your lights up. Yeah. Hey. Uh, okay. Clark Griswold get off the roof. <laughs> oh. We don't need we don't need this contract in jeopardy now among other things. Yeah. Not even Geico insurance can help you there. <laughs> but that is the humility of Nathan Avaldi. Ball and no strikes the count to Kyle Higashioka. You know when you consider a deficit late and you start thinking about the chess match and what Aaron Boone might have on his bench to generate offense Gary Sanchez is one of the first names that come to mind. As we mentioned Aaron Boone and Alex Cora went to more of a defense first lineup tonight certainly more true of what the Yankees did. The Yankees going with three catchers in their roster. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a ball and two strikes. You kind of get all the numbers and all the rules, and you can throw them in the basket. In a one game, winner moves on, loser goes home. You got to play the hot hand, whoever's healthy. And both these managers have done a great job of that. Rarely can you say, Matt, that the most valuable person in an entire organization is not a player is Alex Cora. People forget it. this same team pretty much was a last place team last year, and here they are in first place. Second time Higashiyoshi has struck out on a breaking ball, and that's seven tonight for Nate Evaldi. Still 3-0 Boston. Two scoreless innings of relief by Yankee right-hander Clay Holmes, and now it's Luis Severino's turn to try to hold down the Boston lineup. Four games of regular season work for Severino, who missed about a year and a half recovering from Tommy John surgery. There was a series of setbacks as he was recovering from that procedure, including a groin strain, a shoulder problem, and it's been a long road back for Severino. Two balls and no strikes. The count to Christian Arroyo. It has been very good with a fastball, a slider, and a power change. He'll use that to both righties and lefties. But he's a guy here that can give you a couple of innings and bridge it. Keep it close. Two balls and a strike to Arroyo. He'll be followed by Kyle Schwarber and Kike Hernandez. On a sharp hop, flag down by Torres. <laughs> that was a much tougher chance than he made it look. That's the Torres we remember from a few years ago. A much more confident player, a better player. And this is not an easy play, makes it look easy, but he's just so much better on that side of the, of the bag than he was at shortstop. And it also affects his hitting, Matt, but more importantly, it affects the play of the New York Yankees. So now Schwarber. 41 games as a Boston Red Sox. Hit 291 and a 957 OPS after the trade from Washington. I think I might have mentioned earlier the trade from the Cubs, of course, acquired from the Nationals, where he put together an all star first half of the season. His offensive game finding a new level in part due to the tutelage of Kevin Long, guy who you'd worked with for many years. Takes a strike, didn't like the call, it's one and two. What Alex Gore has told me is that Kyle Schwarber has fit in perfectly in terms of his personality, other players drawing on his knowledge, specifically Bobby Dahlbeck, their first baseman who's gone this on this great run in the last two months after Schwarber joined the team. Not only that, Buster, but I mean, some guys like baseball. This guy loves baseball, and I mean, he likes getting here early. He's a cage rat. He studied with Kevin Long and became a student of Kevin Long and changed his style away and actually ended up changing his career around in the trajectory. A lot of his credit, he gives it back to hitting coach Kevin Long. This guy who knows the strike zone pretty well, too. College catcher at Indiana. By the way, in the lineup tonight with a Boilermaker in Kevin Plawecki. Peaceful coexistence. Something that doesn't happen very often. Retired by his ex-teammate. Well, we mentioned that he got Garrett Cole back in 2015. That is a Cub. Slider that went right into his swing path. Into the Allegheny. And he got him again tonight.
Same result, two different pitches. 15 on the breaking ball tonight on the fastball up. Here's Kike Hernandez. You remember the magic he had in 2016. I mean, he missed virtually the entire year, came back to play in the postseason with the Cubs, and went crazy. And there was an aura around Kyle Schwarber as a postseason star that was real that year. Well, remember, he got hurt. They flew him in, and it was like the savior flew in. Yeah, people were like, this dude hasn't played all year. Came back just for the World Series and made a real impact. Count is 0-2 on Kike Hernandez. You know, one player can change an entire lineup and dynamic of the clubhouse. Alex Cora has done exactly that for the entire kind of halo of the Boston Red Sox. But he's one of the rare managers. that walks around and feels the energy and is very connected to his 26-man roster. Severino gets the Red Sox in order in the fifth. Three-nothing Red Sox. Top half of inning number six. The Yankees started with the rookie shortstop, Andrew Velasquez. Rizzo and Judge follow. And Nate Valdi has been nasty. We've got a pinch hitter actually leading things off in the sixth. It's Rugnet Odor to bat for Velasquez. You know, you, you wondered at what point Aaron Boone was going to forego the defense first lineup. Running out of time, top of the sixth inning, and it's now. Yeah, the rule of thumb, if you're even or ahead, you go with defense. With them being three runs behind, Boone is now attacking with his offensive team. Odor here leading off. And Evaldi's just throwing the heck out of the ball. I mean, fastball's up in the zone, down. He has a hesitation. He has quick pitch. He has the entire arsenal working tonight. And a great look. Seven strikeouts. He's allowed two singles. Starts the sixth, having retired the last ten Yankees to face him. And he gets Odor on three pitches. Eight strikeouts for Evaldi tonight. In some paint here, inside corner. A little split, 91. The tumble and the frame. One gun base is empty for Anthony Rizzo, who has grounded to first and struck out tonight. Rounded to first, struck out, and hit one near the pesky pole that's got a chance, and that one's gone. A home run for Anthony Rizzo. Both former Cubs heroes with big home runs tonight, both playing first base, both leading off. And it was the breaking ball this time for Rizzo. Watch him wait for it and then deliver the blow. And focus on the back knee going down to the ground, showing tremendous force. And the Yankees are in business. Three to one, Boston. Here's Aaron Judge. You know, when we were preparing for this one tonight, Buster only made the observation that with all the foul balls that Anthony Rizzo hits up the line in right field, Fenway Park could be a perfect place for him because that pesky pole gives you a few extra feet to keep a ball fair, Buster, and it happened. That's right, 302 feet down the right field line, and in the two months he's been with the Yankees because he crowds the plate. Tries to take the inside part of the plate away from pitchers. He hits a ton of foul balls here. Much more forgiving. On a couple of hops for Bogarts, who's got a hurry, and Judge beats it out. 
perhaps a little bit of momentum going the way of the visitors here in the sixth inning. Oh, Aaron Judge was flying up the line. There is activity in the Boston bullpen for the first time tonight. Here comes Alex Cora. He has Ryan Brazier up and he's made the move. The first sign of trouble. And Avaldi, who was spectacular through five innings, leaves the Red Sox leading by a pair. First Boston pitching change of the night. And we'll be right back. Nate Evaldi was terrific tonight five and a third he exits with a runner aboard is his responsibility eight strikeouts in his 71 pitch night. He leaves Boston in good shape leading by two but the Yankees threatening and they turn to a guy that's been really good down the stretch. Ryan Brazier missed most of the regular season rehabbing a severe calf injury then he had a concussion while he was rehabbing but since being called back up in early September. He's allowed only two earned runs in 12 innings. And Brazier, the first thing he has to do is evaluate the situation here. You have one of the hottest hitters in baseball in Stanton and one of the coldest hitters in baseball in Joy Gallo. That's your landing strip. You've got to be very careful with Stanton. Landing strip is Joy Gallo. A ball and a strike to count to Stanton, who singled and struck out tonight. Stanton thinking tie ball game here just a little late and behind on it. You know some optimism for Yankee fans in three of their last five games at Fenway they've come back to win and all of those rallies didn't start until the eighth inning or later. Got a long way to go tonight. Two balls and a strike to count to the four time All Star and former National League MVP. You know, a little bit more on Ryan Brazier and, and how much Alex Cora relied on him down the stretch. He actually pitched him on four straight days through the final weekend of the season. Slider his favorite weapon. Stanton hits one to the monster again and that one's off the top of the wall. Judge streaking around third. The throw to the plate is in time to get him. Perfect execution by the Red Sox. You're thinking second and third, one out. I cannot believe that Phil Nevin sent Aaron Judge. And now the Red Sox want the exact matchup they want with two outs and facing their weak link here at Joy Gallo, a guy that's been very, very cold with man in scoring position. It's got to be closer than that, right, Alex? Absolutely Buster and again I mean you just know at two o'clock in the afternoon you're visualizing that play if you're Phil Nevin anything off the wall unless something unusual happened and it hits the ladder and it goes way left or way right it's second and third with one out you don't have to overthink that one that one's right in front of you I'm surprised of the magnitude of that mistake in this situation. Well a couple of trends showed up there on that play as Gallo digs in. Runner at second two gone. 
the Yankees had been much maligned all year long for base running mistakes. 22 outs recorded at the plate, and that tied them for the most in baseball. And the Red Sox outfield has been terrific. 43 outfield assists during the regular season, the most by far in the sport. Kike Hernandez played that absolutely perfectly in center. Gallo lifts a high fly ball toward the stands, and that will get out of play. You're absolutely right, Matt. I mean, that was a strike from Kike Hernandez, two Bogarts, and a perfect throw to the plate. Now, here's the play. He's right in front of you. Nevin should have his – and that's the mistake, right? It's a little bit reactive and not proactive. If we, We're going to play that again, and we're going to show you when that Phil Nevin should have had his hands up right away. Counts 0 and 2 on Joey Gallo. I'm going to show you where Phil Nevin should have his hands up. And right around here, if we pause it, he should have your hands up. And there should be no question. Second and third, one out. Hands should be up. He's thinking, he's thinking. And now he makes a mistake. And that's why these games are so special because you see unusual things when the heartbeat is racing really, really fast, the, un the improbable happens. And that's what happened right there with Nevin. And Gallo pops it up. Only one on the Rizzo homer. Base, though he is positioned in shallow right in the shift against Devers, and that slides Urshela back over to shortstop. Devers lost his bat on that swing. The Yankees do get through on the scoreboard on the Rizzo homer, but you get the feeling they left a little meat on the bone in that top of the inning. So in the bottom of the sixth inning, a three to one Boston lead for Devers, Bogarts, and Verdugo. Luis Severino entering his second work uh, inning of work, that is. And the Red Sox have Jonathan Loizaga up in the bullpen behind him, the, Re the Yankees, rather. So far, so good from the Yank bullpen. Matt, we talked about the Red Sox having a great landing strip with Gallo, and they've done it now twice. In big situations, he's come up, and in these big games, the ball will find you every single time. The Red Sox have done a nice job of finding Gallo. Severino gets back in the count with a foul ball. Two balls and two strikes. Devers has walked twice tonight. Scored in front of the Bogarts homer in the first. And now it's a full count. By the way, that ball that Stanton hit is a homer in 11 of the 30 ballparks in Major League Baseball. I mean, that was a rocket. Smoked. He's hit a couple of those tonight. The 3 2 pitch. Yeah, both balls off the walls. Not with the optimal outcome for the Yankees. One should have been a double or could have been a double, and the other one ends up with an out at home plate. Nevertheless, two Rockets for Stanton as he continues to stay hot. Rafi Devers has battled in every plate appearance. He's gone to a full count. This time he strikes out. Xander Bogart is plus three runs tonight. First with a two run home on the 2 1 changeup on the first. 
at bat. And now, as a shortstop and defender, Kike to Bogarts and a strike home to save a run. Plus three, two on the run, and one cutting one off at home plate for the all-star shortstop. Tip of the cap to Kike Hernandez out there as well for initiating that great play. Ball and no strikes to Xander Bogarts. Matt, you mentioned about Bogarts struggling. I mean, shoot, in the nine games, last nine games of the regular season, he didn't have a single extra base hit. But in talking with folks on the Red Sox staff, they said this is someone whose athleticism is so tremendous, his acumen so great, he could turn around very quickly. As he has tonight with that two run homer that kind of set the tone for Nate Evaldi. And underscore that these guys, Buster, have been here before Bogarts, Devers, Kike Hernandez. I mean, this is not their first rodeo, and they're at home with an energized crowd. You add Schwarber to that, a World Series hero and a champion. Red Sox are feeling pretty good about themselves. The one challenge that they do have, Alex Cora is asking that bullpen to get 11 outs, and that's not the ideal recipe for success. And there's ball four, so Severino, after striking out Devers, loses Bogarts on a four pitch walk. A reminder to get your game on at MLBShop.com. Authentic on field caps, tees, hoodies, and more. Get all your postseason gear and wear what the champs wear at the official source, MLBShop.com. This one out one on for Alex Verdugo Matt, there's a part of the game here where Alex Cora likes to do a little bit of the unpredictable maybe put a little hit and run on give the green light to Bogarts maybe steal a bag here but if you're Alex Cora you're thinking how do I get this game to four to one five to one keep adding on there is no safe lead especially in a ballpark like Fenway Alex that ball four to Bogarts I, I is that not an example perhaps of how the catcher catches the ball the difference between uh, the pitch being ca called a strike and a ball. Uh, absolutely. And it was a strike but he missed his location and a lot of times you know the, the, the umpire would not give you that pitch even though it's a strike. The entire infield gathers for this conversation with Severino. Boston is just one for six with runners on base tonight. And that one was a big one. The two run Bogarts homer in the first. Bogarts at first with one away here for Verdugo who has popped out and grounded into a double play. Ball and a strike. Six strikes, eight balls for Luis Severino in the inning. First sign of his faltering, and Aaron Boone has Loisaga ready to go. Just miss the inside corner, two and one. After returning on September 21st, Severino had walked just one hitter in his brief six innings in the final moments of the regular season. That's into the corner and potentially trouble. It is a fair ball. Bogarts was waved. Now he was stopped. We're going to have a play at the plate. It's too late. 
Red Sox third base coach Carlos Fables got caught in between there. First he stopped him, then he sent him, and it all worked out okay for the Sox. Boston gets its three run lead back. Here comes Aaron Boone. He's going to make a pitching change. The call goes out for Jonathan Loisaga. Verdugo smokes this one down the right field line. Red Sox playing a feisty style of baseball. Catches a break here by not going into the stands. And you see Carlos Fable is here. Gets a little stuck. The difference is right field versus the short porch and left. Pitching change will be right back. Yankee bullpen shows a crack in its armor for the first time tonight. The RBI double by Alex Verdugo gets to Luis Severino and knocks him out of the mix in favor of Jonathan Loisaga who put together a great body of work for the Yankees all year long. They'll try to strand Verdugo at second with a run in and only one away. Hunter Renfro has struck out in single tonight. Loisaga missed 22 games in September while on the injured list with a right shoulder strain. And his absence was really felt by the Yankees. Reliable. He can give Aaron Boone more than an out or two. In fact, his 22 scoreless relief outings of four or more outs were the second most in the big leagues. The only guy with more is in the Boston bullpen, Garrett Whitlock. Behind here, however, three and zero. Oh. The only bullpen in baseball that had a lower percentage of inherited runners scoring was that of the L.A. Dodgers. New York's pen has been very good in spots like this. Three zero -oh should have the green light here. Pitch with a 98 miles an hour fastball. Loisaga did not allow a run in 11 of his last 12 regular season appearances. Stranded all eight runners he inherited during that stretch. There's ball four. This visit's coming from pitching coach Matt Blake. Kevin Plawecki is the scheduled batter, and he's going to be pulled back in favor of a pinch hitter. It's the man known as the mayor of Ding Dong City. That's Travis Shaw, reacquired by the Red Sox from Milwaukee, and really had a strong finish to the season. Guy who began his career here in Boston, went on to have big moments with the Brewers. A series of injuries had limited his productivity the last two seasons, but has really come alive down the stretch. And you had a feeling Travis Shaw was going to play some kind of a role tonight. The stage is set for him with one out and two on. Alex does it feel differently trying to mount a comeback as the Yankees are going to have to do and try to hold the Red Sox here in a postseason game versus the regular season. Well for sure because Alex Cora is going to throw you his very best. He's not going to save the queen in the chessboard. He's going to come at you with whatever he has and if that's Pivetta or anybody else there he's going to mix match and there's nobody like Alex Cora 
he really has the Alex Cora effect on this magical Red Sox team. So here's the left-handed hitting pinch hitter with runners at first and second. And Shaw takes a strike. Most of Shaw's postseason experience came with the Brewers. Only two of his 41 career playoff plate appearances have come with the Red Sox. Boy, to such a big difference in this game so far has been the face on balls. The Red Sox haven't walked any. Four walks by Yankee pitching tonight. Two of them have scored. Yankees come in as the most disciplined offensive team in the American League has been chasing. And the Red Sox, the most undisciplined team coming into the to this game, has been extremely disciplined. And when the Yankees have come into happy zone, the Red Sox have punished them. What a luxury for Alex Cora to have a guy like Shaw off the bench. He talked to us about the game tonight. Part of the reason I'm not going with him is for exactly a situation like this. And here it is. It's played perfectly out for Alex Cora and the Red Sox. Two balls and a strike. Two runners on with a man in. And one away in the bottom of the sixth. Two and two. Another big out to fade on deck. The home run threat of Bobby Dahlbeck waiting next. Two balls and two strikes. Loisega in this inning for Severino, who allowed the run. Got him. And a good riding fastball here, 98 up in the zone. And just blows him away. Good mechanics. Right over the top. Velo spin rate. The entire box. This young man has it. Bobby Dahlbeck has struck out and flied to right tonight. The strikeout back in the second came against Garrett Cole with a runner at second base. He's got men at first and second here and two away. When the Yankees hit in the seventh, they'll have Torres, Gardner, and Urshela. And it's almost as though you start counting outs in between Judge and Stanton plate appearances. Indeed. It looked like they had done all they could do to score an additional run or two in the sixth inning. But a bad base running circumstance prevented that from happening. You know, getting back to that, too, I know that. Uh, you brought out what you thought was a mistake in the third base coaching box. You got great speed on base and as I kind of decompress and deconstruct that play. You're forcing Boston into making a perfect play and they did. The, the I'm not sure I wouldn't have sent him myself in other words. Well I, I think you're wrong there Manny okay. and I'll tell you why the score would dictate what you do next and because the score is 3 0 you have to be ultra conservative. If you're up 3-0, I still think you're wrong, but I would at least accept it. But when you're behind, they're in the driver's seat. You have to force your guys to hit. You don't have the luxury to take that break. Now, Carlos Fabian is on the other side. He was aggressive, but he has the luxury because he's up by a few runs. Two balls and a strike to count to Dombeck.
a legendary part of Fenway Park there. Every time I see a foul ball into that corner, I think of the dude about 10 years ago that threw a slice of pizza. That's what you think you, about. You ever seen that highlight? Yeah, I have. Every time I look at that corner, I hear a lot of bad words in my head. Well, <laughs> we have different memories, I guess. You and I have had different experiences here. I'm just a Yahoo that watches the game, and you were in the middle of all this. I still love Boston. What a great city. There's nothing more fun as a Yankee to come here to compete in front of his great fans in the stadium, and the same when Boston goes to New York. It is the greatest thing that this game has going is this rivalry. Did you and Jason Veritek settle your differences today, finally? Not after yet. After all these years? Not yet. Not yet. Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, right. Stay you tuned. haven't spoken in how many years? 17 years? I'm not good at math, but that sounds about right. Swing and a miss by Dahlbeck. Back-to-back -back strikeouts by Jonathan Loisega preventing that all catchers in innings caught this year. Over a thousand. Top total by far around the big leagues, and he's the new catcher receiving the new pitcher. Right-hander Tanner Houck making his postseason debut tonight. He'll face Torres, Gardner, and Urshela, and he inherits a three-run lead. Aaron water bottle. Dare I say we've seen worse? Tanner Houck has been used as a reliever this year. He had a number of starts earlier this season. Better results out of the bullpen. It's coming off of five perfect innings on Saturday. And he starts Glaber Torres with a strike. Wanted to tell you guys a story before I started that interview with Bucky Dent. He looked at the scoreboard and said, you know, that game that we came back and win to win. We were down 2 0 in that game. The seventh inning, that's a Bucky Dent inning. <laughs> okay. Just putting that out there, got it. And we talked about how New York had some eighth inning magic in their three game sweep of the Red Sox here just over a week ago. Hauk was involved in one of those Yankee comebacks. Back on September 25th, enter the game with Boston up a run. Issued back to back walks to Stanton and Gallo. Got a double play ball against this man, Glaber Torres. Struck out Sanchez and then started the eighth inning with strikeouts. That's when the trouble started. He walked Brett Gardner, walked Aaron Judge. Was pulled for another reliever who hit Anthony Rizzo with a pitch and then Stanton hit a slam. Common denominator for Yankee offense when they do really well is usually set up by walks. And that was the case in that situation as well. Tonight, no walks for this Red Sox pitching, and that's been the difference. Boston has. Hansel Robles up in the bullpen behind him. 2 2. Torres serves a fly ball out to center that carries nicely to Kike Hernandez. T Mobile covers the most interstate highway miles with 5G. Homer away, stay connected to your team with T Mobile, the leader in 5G coverage. One gone for Brett Gardner. Well, Yankee leadoff hitters in this game are now 0 for 7. Gardner struck out twice tonight. He bats here with one away and nobody on. We saw that shot at DJ LeMayhew a moment ago and his absence due to the sports hernia it it reminds you the bottom of the Yankee lineup hasn't been very productive tonight six through nine hitters are one for eight with five strikeouts 
LeMahieu hits at the top of the lineup, but everything gets shorter when one of your biggest offensive weapons isn't available. And his absence makes a big difference. And that's underscored more in a big game like this, where the whole strategy is after one game, not a weekend, not a week, or not a season. If you have a hole, that hole is going to be exposed, and it has so far for the Yankee offense tonight. This is the eighth count that a Yankee hitter has been behind no balls and two strikes. Been looking at these all night. And Hout strikes him out. And a great combo here. First the slider, and then the gas. Some cheddar, top of the zone. By the contact hitter in Brett Gardner. Two gone bases empty now for Urshela. Red Sox pitching looking for its fourth one two three inning of the game. Urshela has singled that was an infield number and lined the left. Well we went on the air tonight and you mentioned how neutralizing Aaron Judge and Giancarlo Stanton might not be possible given how hot they've been and they've stayed hot tonight and you also mentioned that somebody else was going to have to step up and that hasn't happened yet for the Yankees. Ball and two strikes. Fifteen swing and misses for this Yankee offense tonight. One and two to Gio Urshela. And how do you beat a bully offense? You hit him right between the eyes. And that's exactly what the Red Sox are doing. They're coming at him. They're not running from them. If you run from the Yankees, they will get you. You can run, but you can't hide. Today, the Red Sox are taking it to this Yankee offense. Back to back 95 mile an hour fastballs. That one fouled away. So we've already seen Odor pinch hit for Velasquez. If somebody gets on base here, say it's Urshela at this moment, it might be an opportunity for Aaron Boone to get Gary Sanchez into the game. The next 2 2. Alex Cora is an old school manager, and, and he's already, he always thinks two or three hitters ahead. He's got Taylor and Robles already up. You mentioned Gary Sanchez. He's got that. He's already thinking about that. Josh Taylor, the left hander, has joined Hansel Robles in the Boston bullpen. And if you're Cora, you have seven outs to work with, and you're trying to think about. How do I mismatch here for seven outs? Got him. Six. Another one, two, three inning executed by Boston pitching. Stretching Thursday, game one of the ALDS between the White Sox and Astros starts at 4 p.m. Eastern on FS1. And FS1 also has game one of the other ALDS, the winner from this one. Will take on the 100 win Tampa Bay Rays. And you better pack your lunch for Tampa Bay because they're ready and they are good. Nothing I but 110 mile an hour velocity guys <laughs> out of the bullpen is a start. <laughs> Christian Arroyo leads things off in the Boston half of the seventh. Arroyo, Schwarber, and Hernandez. We had to turn in our picks for the World Series for ESPN.com. I got the Rays. 
winning the whole thing. Against who? Who to jab out of the National League? Milwaukee Brewers. Rays is the only team that loses three starters and gets better. With the fourth lowest payroll in baseball. I mean, really, really impressive what they do year in and year out. Rolled out to the left side for Rugnit Odor, one away. Well, for a lot of people that follow this game every day, like us, the Rays are about as close to a perfect team as you might find in the American League. 100 wins, best record in franchise history. They're great at scoring runs. They're better at run prevention. And they've got a bunch of guys that can beat you from different sides of the plate. Lau and Meadows, left-handed batters. They've got Wander Franco, who might be the rookie of the year if Randy Rosarena isn't. Reached base safely in 43 straight games. One of the longest in recent baseball history. And Matt, you talk about a diverse roster. I mean, you talk about Wander Franco there, 20 years old, and they have a veteran in Nelson Cruz, over 40 years old. And Franco, for a young hitter, struck out like three or four times over the last three weeks. It's remarkable in this day and age to have a young player like that that can make contact and hit with power and get on base that often. Wow. Uh, it's remarkable at how that team has, has won given the payroll constraints. I mean, you're talking about a price tag that's, uh, what, about less than a third of what it is for the two teams on the field tonight? It is, and what makes them great is they know how to do it the Tampa Rays way. The Yankees can't try to be the Rays. The Red Sox can't try to be the Rays. The Yankees have to be the big, bad Yankees that they are, and the Red Sox as well. I see a lot of big market teams trying to make mistakes to be the Rays. You're not going to be the Rays. You're not that smart. You're not that good. Keep to your superpower, which is tremendous resources, and bring in the players that you bring in. A ball and a strike to count to Kyle Schwarber, who has homered tonight. It was part of the undoing of Garrett Cole. And a game of adjustments short, but just misses them in the first. And then not the second time, a one-two fastball. 97, 435 feet for the world champion, Schwarber. Alex Cora would like nothing but to add on to this lead, as comfortable as it may seem. A three-run lead, and the Yankees are down to their final six outs of the season. Alex is very aware that he's lost the last three that he's played against the Yankees when leading after seven. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, trust me, Alex Cora is not comfortable right now. He's very capable, knows what this team is capable he's playing against. And to your point, the short memory of what happened here less than 10 days ago, this game's not over till it's over. And hey, there's ball four to Schwarber. That's the second walk by Luizaga tonight. And stick around, folks. A three-run lead in this stadium right here. It's like a one-run lead in 29 other parks. Six outs, still a tall mountain to climb. For the weakest part of the Red Sox team, which is that bullpen. One out, one on for Kike Hernandez, who singled back in the third. He had a multi-hit game in five of his last eight in the regular season. Another miss by Luizaga, Ballman, no strikes. Three of the four runs that have come in for Boston tonight have cashed on the homer. Two run shot by Bogarts. Solo dinger by Schwarber. They scored that fourth run on a Verdugo RBI double in the sixth. And now it's 2-0. and oh, And a well-timed visit after six straight misses. You see a guy like Anthony Rizzo go to the mound and talk to the young pitcher who's going to be a future closer here in this organization with the Yankees. Reminds me a lot of the work that Don Manley and Keith Hernandez did for those New York teams 
back in the 80s and early 90s. A guy that brings stability, platinum glove winner, hit the home run tonight, a world champion with the Cubs. If I was the New York Yankees, I would have a circle around this guy and Aaron Judge. Sign these two guys, build around them, and then there'll be a lot of decisions to make in the future, especially depending on what happens in the outcome of this game. Well, the Yankees hoping that those uh, those offseason decisions can be put on hold for a while. Needing to come back tonight. Two balls and no strikes. The count to Hernandez. Is he swinging here? Oh, not on that. Easy take. 3 0, seven straight balls issued by Loisaga. And now the question becomes when does Aaron Boone deploy his next bullpen piece? Because he's got Chad Green hot. This is an easy one for Alex Cora. This is a 3 0 take sign right here. With Devers on deck. Pitchers hanging by a thread. Do not help him. Three balls and no strikes. Wow. Eight straight misses, and that's back to back innings in which the Yankees have walked two batters. And when you see that, this is a residual of Garrett Cole's start tonight. 28 pitches for this young man, 27. He's fatigued, he's tired, but that's why you need your $324 million pitcher to get you to the seventh inning, a la Andy Pettit and others. Fourth reliever of the game on his way in for the Yankees. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the 2021 American League wildcard game on ESPN presented by Han Cook Tire. Sander Bogart set the tone with a two run homer in the first against Garrett Cole. The Yankee ace was knocked out of the game early in the third. Boston has never trailed. They enjoy a three run lead here in the seventh and looking for more. Well, the next to work out of the Yankee bullpen is veteran right hander Chad Green. A career high 67 appearances this year, accompanied by a career high 10 winning decisions. Green ended the regular season unscored upon in his final seven appearances of the year. However, he did have a problem with homers this year. And Rafi Devers is certainly a home run threat. He's walked twice and struck out tonight. Of the 14 homers that Chad Green allowed this year, and by the way, that was the fourth most among all relievers, half of them came with runners on base. A dangerous hitter in a dangerous situation. First pitch to Devers is fouled away. Now, Rafi Devers in his age 24 season has put up quite a regular season campaign. 194 extra base hits since the start of 2019. That leads all the baseball. And the youngest player in franchise history to go 35 homers and 35 doubles in the same season. Now we could keep going with the Devers accomplishments in his brief big league career. Well hit out to center field chasing Gardner to the track before he can haul it in. Endeavors just missed a base clearing double. Good swing, 96 miles an hour. Green, who has been worked and overworked, has been exhausted. And again, that's a fastball up right there that when Green is right, just like Cole, those balls are not touched. And the game has changed a little bit since June. Those balls up there usually are swing and misses. We've seen tonight where Schwarber endeavors there. Those balls are now hittable. In one case, a home run for Schwarber. Xander Bogart, it's a two-run homer, a strikeout, and a walk tonight. 
There are no secrets between the Red Sox and Yankees in terms of repertoire, arsenal, and among the uh, the familiar matchups is this one. Xander Bogarts has seen Green 14 times, including the playoffs. He's only got two hits against him in that stretch. Only one Red Sox shortstop has ever had a multi homer playoff game. Rico Petroselli game six of the 1967 World Series. I was going to guess no more Garcia Parra would have been a good guess. Yeah, I'm glad I did it. You know, that's, that's for the older fans. <laughs> you talked about Devers and at third base. I mean, the Red Sox are well covered in the left side of their infield. Bogart's one of the most underrated players in the entire game. A high quality character guy, beloved by players, revered in his clubhouse, and set the tone today with a big home run and the relay throw to get judged at the plate. Alex, you played in games like this before. To, for the Red Sox to jump out 2 0, bottom of the first inning, what was the impact of that in your eyes? Ginormous, especially at home. You, you know, you want to come out of the gates, get these fans involved. Don't forget, the last memory of the Yankees coming here was not a good one. They dominated the Red Sox for three. To say, hey, we're back at home. It's October, not September, sets the tone. Ginormous hit for Bogarts and the Red Sox. That's the third walk of the inning by Yankee pitching. The bases are loaded with two gone for Alex Verdugo. The platoon advantage now shifts to the Red Sox, and that's going to bring Matt Blake out to the mound again. You know, we rarely keep track of mound visits. It, it, we thought that was going to be a big deal when that rule was instituted a number of seasons ago. It, it rarely becomes a talking point, but tonight, there have been a steady stream of conversations on the Yankee side and they've only got one mound visit left. So two big plays Matt has been by the both third base coaches and, and you should have two different mentalities. Fable is here should have two thoughts. One I have a long right field so I have plenty of room and two I'm already up three to one so I can be aggressive. Let's run him. Let's run him. And he gets rewarded with the run. Phil Nevin on the other side should have the exact opposite approach is number one first thought short porch and left field with a green monster and two I'm down three to one it should be a big stop sign early no question but you think about that before the boss hit is not an in game decision in real time two big plays so far in this game bases loaded two gone. Alex Verdugo has been a terror with the bases loaded this year five for ten. He's got Schwarber Hernandez and Bogarts aboard with two gone. The Yankee season on the balance right here one big blow. Into the gap in left center field. Schwarber scores easily. Kike right behind him. Throw into second where Verdugo is out, but not before the damage is done. Three walks in the inning. Two of them come around to score on the double by Alex Verdugo. The Red Sox take their biggest lead of the night. Six outs away from a date with the Rays in the division series. Look and Instagram. New pitcher for Boston. As the veteran Hansel Robles takes over 72 appearances this year combined between the Twins and Sox. He has the luxury of pitching with Boston's biggest lead of the night on the scoreboard. 
And he'll face the bottom of the Yankee order, a pinch hitter leading things off. I'm quite sure Aaron Boone would have preferred using Gary Sanchez with runners on base, but he's just running out of time. So Sanchez will bat for Higashioka leading off the eighth. Odor and Rizzo to follow. And Sanchez on the first pitch, lines to center field. The Yankees have overcome a five run playoff deficit just three times in their franchise history. Most recently, game one of the 2010 ALCS against the Rangers. And you were a big part of that comeback with a two run eighth inning single. But the point there is that that kind of night doesn't come around very often, even for a team like the Yankees with all their postseason history. Brugna Dodor struck out on three pitches when he pinch hit leading off the sixth. You see nothing but strikes tonight. Man, we talk, we hear a lot about the game and the conversations going on around baseball about the importance of power of bullpen. But at the end of the day, in order to win championships, it's still the evergreen approach is starting dominant pitching, which the Yankees did not get today and the Red Sox did get today. But the big difference here is for Red Sox pitchers, 10 strikeouts, no walks. Pitching line for the Yankees, seven strikeouts, seven walks. Seven walks by the Yankees pitching staff tonight is the most they've ever issued in a winner take all game. And, and we talked about it early in the game. The keys to the game is who's going to make the mistakes, who's going to throw more strikes. If you walk the Yankees, they will destroy you like an avalanche. If you hit the bully right between the eyes and you do not walk them, they, they have an opportunity to fold. Four walks for the Red Sox have come to produce into runs. Two balls and a strike. You know, with the exception of the, of the rally in the sixth, and it was a rally that just turned into one run on the Rizzo homer, the Yankees have two singles tonight. That's it. I wow. mean, they got the, the judge base hit, and then the Stanton double, then you had the play at the plate and Gallo popped out. But th that was really the only loud inning by the Yankee lineup all night. Still two and two. You know, you could take this long approach about, you know, walks, home runs, and, and strikeouts. But in the postseason, the first tier pitching, they're not going to walk you. They have good enough stuff that they can get you out in the strike zone like they are today. So whatever works for 162, that's the macro. In the micro, like in a game like tonight, it does not work. And the Red Sox have come at you with an avalanche of players in a diverse approach with singles, walks, home runs, hitting the ball the other way. They've put on a clinic tonight. Well, back to the walks. The only other postseason game in which a Yankee pitching staff walked as many as seven was game seven of the 2004 ALCS against the Red Sox. That is in a winner-take-all postseason game, as we talked about a moment ago. But also hard to blame them when they got to get seven innings when your horse only goes two innings. And Odor on the full count pitch hits a fly ball out to shallow center field. Bogarts yields to Verdugo. And the Yankees are down to their final four outs tonight. In the open, we talked about Judge and Stanton, the big guys who have been red hot coming into this. Tonight, they're three for six. The rest of the team, two for 20. The lone Yankee run tonight, courtesy of the Anthony Rizzo solo shot that was wrapped just inside the pesky pole in right field.
player who was drafted by the Red Sox in 2007. High school kid. Green and unrefined. Got to the big leagues with San Diego. Major League stardom in Chicago. Ends this season as a Yankee and he'll be on the free agent market as soon as this season comes to an end. In the mid 80s Keith Hernandez arrived in New York from St. Louis and changed the culture of that clubhouse. I think Anthony Rizzo has the same opportunity to build a championship run here for the Yankees in the future but he's the main guy you have to sign. But there were a lot of people who felt like the Red Sox should have grabbed him when he was available on the trading block a swing and a miss a one two three eighth by Hansel Robles all the momentum on the home side tonight to the bottom of the end Lincoln to take on the Corn Huskers 730 Eastern 430 Pacific on ABC and the ESPN app one app one tap oh my college football six to one Boston Chad Green continues on the mound for the Yankees. Renfro Vasquez and Dahlbeck. Boston has Garrett Whitlock up in the bullpen. He'll be looking for an opportunity to close this one down and would love a little more support. You know a lot of this if the Yankees do not come back the blame will fall on Garrett Cole's shoulder of course because he's the big guy these days. But the other thing is the research the R and D department of the Yankees they've built this team for the long run all, all or nothing approach and that swing and miss approach may work OK in the regular season. It does not work in the postseason in a short game like this one. And you see the contrast approach between the Yankees all or nothing and this diverse approach that the Red Sox had tonight contact walking you know line to line offensive approach has been fun to watch one gone for Christian Vasquez making his first plate appearance of the game well let's face it the, the Yankee lineup kind of continued tonight what had been established over the weekend in the Bronx against the Rays. And if it wasn't for an infield single from Aaron Judge Sunday afternoon, they might not even be here. Yeah. They didn't hit it all over that weekend series. And a lot of people just counted it off because the Rays pitching staff is so good. But they scored a total of seven runs in their last four games entering tonight. And again, it's a hard flip of the switch to think that you can just change things that's including tonight just seven runs in their last four games. Yeah man and when Joy Gallo came over I loved the Anthony Rizzo pickup because he's a baseball player makes contact platinum glove and he's a guy that can change the culture as a world champion there or improve the culture. But Joy Gallo why he served as a very good outfielder and a left handed hitter he does not make enough contact and if you're striking out more than half of your at bats in postseason that's going to increase. And it just has not worked out so far for Gallo and the Yankees. Two gone here in the bottom of the eight for Bobby Dahlbeck. Well, not many preseason odds makers and pundits gave Boston much of a chance in the postseason this year. They didn't even give much of a chance in the regular season. Their win total was set at around 81 they were thought to be somewhere around a 500 ish team maybe slightly better than last year's version. There was one guy who kept on saying we're better than what you guys people think you, you people think and that was Alex Cora. From day one Buster he said that and you know talking to Iglesias before the game yesterday he is so impressed with the way that Alex Cora every day walks around that clubhouse he owns that clubhouse he invests time in getting to know all 26 players and then puts them in a position to win and be successful. 
Red Sox go away in order in the eighth. We head to the top of the ninth inning with Boston three outs away from a date in the division series. A really cruel, ironic twist because the guy who has a chance to close out their season is former Yankee property. 25 year old rookie Garrett Whitlock has been terrific this year. He was taken in the Rule 5 draft from the Yankees. You saw the sub 2 ERA. Missed all of 2019 recovering from Tommy John. Didn't pitch at all last year because there was no minor league season. And he has been terrific for Boston. Jam shot out to shortstop. One away in the ninth. And the swing moment of the game tonight was the double by Stanton. And then two perfect bounce passes. One by Kike Hernandez, the other one by Bogarts. Strike and change complete momentum of this game tonight. Oh, and one the count is Stanton. Stanton's two for three. He's done his part. A couple of rockets that found the monster in left. That one's into the other corner. And a fair ball home run. Second solo shot of the game for the Yankees. Both of them have come right around the pesky pole in right. You cannot say enough good things about Stanton and his play here the last month and all year. Fastball away and just a bullet to right field. So strong, great leverage and confidence at the highest level. We go back to the start of the, the 2020 playoffs. Last year, the wild card round, and for Stanton, has seven homers in his last eight playoff games. And Matt, for the for, for the Yankees, some lessons learned here. They're a better team with Torres not at shortstop but at second. And Stanton started taking off once he started playing the outfield. Gallo with a high drive to right. This one stays in the park for Renfro, and the Yankees are down to their final out in 2021. Labor tour is the batter. Brett Gardner on deck. Possibly staring down his final opportunity as a Yankee. And Matt, I'm going to make a prediction here for next year. Garrett Cole will be your American League Cy Young winner. And the sophomore season here in New York is so much easier than the first one. And Stanton's a great example of that. Torres sends a fly ball out to right. Hunter Renfro's got it, and the Red Sox have a date with the Rays. A Red Sox team that missed the expanded postseason altogether just a year ago, finishing 24 and 36. Playing in their first ever wild card game. They previously played as a wild card team that advanced all the way to a series. But in terms of the single elimination night, 